I think that we, before we get mad at Peter, again, we need to thank him in this morning. We tend to judge Peter many times as we read the Gospels, and sometimes it could be unfair to him. Sometimes we tend to think, you know, come on, Peter, how come you weren't able to walk on water? You know, come on, Peter, don't you know that you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow him? Before we get mad at Peter, I think we need to thank him. His name is Rock, as the Lord named him. Sometimes he is a solid rock and sometimes a stumbling block. But we need to be thankful to those who stumbled like Peter and those who recorded it in the Gospels so that we don't stumble with the same rocks. Last week in the different homilies, we spoke about how in the measure that Peter followed Christ, he becomes a solid rock. Today, we'll speak about the other face of the coin. Because Jesus calls us to follow him, is that we need to overcome the greatest obstacle, our own thinking, our own thoughts. You are an obstacle, says Jesus today. You are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Thoughts are powerful because they become realities. There's that great book that was written after Second World War. Ideas have consequences to show how everything starts in the mind by Weaver. Thoughts are like the moment of conception of our actions. Maybe it's not today or tomorrow, but give it enough time, and that idea will be born at some time. In a sense, we can say that, we, that thoughts control our lives. Thoughts are powerful also because they are a key to our inner peace. An unmanaged mind leads to enormous amounts of stress. But if we are able to manage our minds, that has a focal point, becomes a focal point to our inner peace. Our second reading from St. Paul, chapter 12 today, reads, Do not conform yourselves to this age but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. And so I want to focus, focus now on three easy steps to the renewal of our minds. Easy to remember at least. I don't think they're easy to do. To free our minds, to feed our minds, and to focus our minds. So in the first place, we need to free our minds from worldly thinking. That was a problem of Peter. He thought he could pick and choose in the faith. He thought he could leave away the renunciation aspect. He thought that he didn't need to carry any load. The problem with his thinking is that instead of carrying the load of Christ, which is light, he ended up carrying the burdens of the world that are heavy. So that's what happens with worldly thinking. It's always deceiving and leads to enslavement. And the hardest is enslavement, that is the enslavement to our own selves. And the worldly thinking is mainly transmitted by the mass media, by the social media. And the main principle is, it's all about you. It leads us to live a self-centered life. And that leads to a great enslavement. So the first proposal this Sunday for this week, that we may free our minds from worldly thinking, is to reduce our use of social media this week. Now I'm going to tell you, of course, like to 
uh, what degree, but each one of us could think, you know, what can I reduce so that I stay away from that worldly thinking affecting me? In the second place, we need to feed our minds with the truth. It's not enough to free ourselves from worldly thinking, but we also need to feed our minds with the truth of Christ. A lady who just recently finished reading the whole Gospel of Mark and underlying just the words of Jesus and reflecting on just the words of Jesus, she shared with me, I understood why Jesus comes across harsh sometimes because he comes from a place that we know not and he knows that he wants us there. He wants us to be someday in heaven. So she was able to understand the truth of the gospel in a deeper way and she was imbued with that thinking, that truth that comes from the Bible. There are more than 7,000 promises in the Bible out there for us. Wouldn't it be great to know some of them? Here are some. Nothing is impossible for God. Trust the Lord and He will act. I will give you rest. Our present sufferings are worth nothing compared to the glory that will be manifested in us. Just a few promises from the more than 7,000 that there are in the Bible. So my invitation for the second point that we may be able to feed our minds with the truth of Christ is that we can read every day the gospel for that day and just write down the line for the day. This is the line for the day. And maybe you can write it on a post-it note, you know, on those post-its, and you can have it in the car or maybe right next to your bed, on the mirror, on your desk or in your wallet or somewhere that you see it in that day. Don't do like that young man. I invited him to do this and he was doing it you know, every day and was uh, writing the, the line of the day in a post-it and having it in his house. He told me on the walls. And I went to bless his apartment. So as I enter, I see the house full of post-its <laughs> all over the walls. It's like, okay, Mark, I meant that you take the old one every day, you know, and you <laughs> replace it with a new one. But that may help us to feed our minds with the truth of the gospel, that we may be able not only to free our minds from worldly thinking, but also being fed with the truth that comes from Christ. And in the last place, to focus our minds in what is good, pleasing, and perfect, as St. Paul says. They asked uh, Jeff Bezos once, the founder of Amazon.com, what the secret for his success was. And he said, I set my heart on a goal, and then I do all that is necessary to achieve it. Heaven is our goal, and heaven has the power to unify all our thoughts. So think about eternity. Eternity is a focal point that helps us to discern. Think about eternity and become more heavenly minded. Many things, when we put them in the perspective of eternity, they start making sense. Or we realize that we shouldn't be thinking those things. Think more about your final destination and that can help you to discern what, thought, what thoughts are not becoming? Heavenly-minded people do great things in this life. They're actually the ones who do the most in this world. So for this last point, I recommend that every night we can write down one, one, one thought of this day. Every night, one thought of this day. And maybe re rewrite it for next day. So if my thought this day was... For example, I don't want to do this. I write it down. And then I rewrite it for tomorrow. This task is an opportunity for getting me to heaven. So that changes our thinking and focuses to eternity. Three words for a renewal of our mind. 
free our mind from worldly thinking. We are called to feed our minds with the truth and also to focus our minds towards eternity. That's why we need to thank Peter before we judge him. He not only taught us by the times when he stumbled, but he also teaches us by his example of standing up again. So firm he stood up again till the end of his life on this earth that he achieved heaven. May we also achieve our eternal goal by the renewal of our minds.